So when building out this suggestion app, basically there was a complex SQL query we had to use to get the ideas and then also get their upvotes and also get the tags that are associated with them. And then there's a bunch of other left joins we had to do to get the data needed to display this. So I wanna walk through this SQL query and then also show you how you can check to see if this SQL query is even good because looking at this, this is a lot of code. How do you know if this is performing or not? You have to check this stuff, right? So basically what I'm doing is I have a schema that has an idea table right here. And you also have the ability for users to upvote the ideas. And then also there are tags associated with an idea. Now to break that down into an ER diagram, we basically have an idea table, which stores ideas that users upload. And that can have many upvotes. So every user can upvote on an idea. And it also has many idea tags, right? So you can have different tags that are shared in your system. For example, if I go back to the app, we have a tag for hooks. We have a tag for JavaScript. Those are all gonna be stored in a tag table, but then you can reference or relate an idea via this join table with a many to many relationship so you can point an idea to various tags. So when I do a query to get back all the ideas, you have to basically do a bunch of joins and special stuff to get back the information that we need to display it in this page over here, which is bringing us to this kind of complex query. So let's break this down. One thing I'd recommend doing is grabbing whatever code you don't understand, pasting it into your LLM, whether whether you're using like cursor or cloud code or whatever, ask it to explain the code for you. And a good suggestion is you can add this, explain this SQL to a junior dev, right? So if you are a beginner, maybe you need to have this broken down into simple steps so you can truly understand it. Get used to that, have AI explain your code, and for the most part, it's gonna do a pretty good job. So what we're doing is we're fetching back all the ideas from that idea table. And to get the upvote count, we have to do a subselect. So we basically grab all of the upvotes and count them based on a where clause that checks that the upvote ID ID matches the current idea ID. So this one should be pretty straightforward. In SQL, you can do something called a subselect, which basically is going to run this SQL query for all the ideas that you find. And then down here, we have to get back all the tags that are associated with the idea. So this one's a little bit more complex. And if you try to break it down, let's try to look at the keywords. So coalesce is basically like a, a special fallback. So it's going to try to get the value of this. And if this happens to be null, it's gonna fall back on an empty object here. Okay, so here's a good example. You say coalesce with username, email, and anonymous. If username and email are both null, then it's gonna fall back on anonymous, okay? So it's just a nice way to fall back on some type of default value. And then we have array arg, which you look over here. Basically, it's going to generate an array of all of these JSON objects that we're building up, and it's going to remove any duplicates. So notice that we have this distinct keyword. It's going to remove duplicates. And since we are doing left joins on the idea tag in the tag table, we're gonna have a bunch of different rows with every single tag that's associated to the idea. And we're going to basically build up a JSON object for every single one to get the name and to also get the ID. So here is the key, this is the value, the key and the value. So eventually we'll have a giant array that looks like this with a bunch of IDs and names. Okay, down here we have a filter to basically make sure that we don't get any objects that look like this. Because we're doing a left join, there are chances that like you're joining with non-existing records and then you're just gonna get back a bunch of nulls. So, like for example, let's say this idea was once associated with a tag and then that tag got deleted or something. It's still gonna try to do the join, but that data won't be there. Now I do have like an on delete cascade, so I don't think that's gonna be an issue. So this could be kind of pointless to have, um, but I have to do a little bit more investigation with SQL to really understand it. Um, but basically you're gonna get back a giant array with all these objects, and then we're going to parse them because they're gonna come back as strings. So we just loop over them and we parse them, or we can just grab the object if it's already an object. So this will be an array of tags that are associated with the idea. Now, if you're watching this and you're kind of new to SQL, I think this might be a little bit overwhelming because there's a lot of stuff you have to learn here. Like you have to understand how group by works, how order by works, how left join works, how inner joins work. But hopefully explaining this, maybe we learned a couple new Postgres keywords and we learned about subselects and we learned about left joins. I might have to go into more detail in another video to talk more about left joins. I do think understanding SQL is very important. And at one point I was really good at SQL and then I started using like other NoSQL databases and DynamoDB and I, and I kind of don't know SQL as well as I once did. So I think I need to get back into it and just kind of polish up my SQL understanding. So now that we all kind of understand this SQL statement a little bit better, how do we check if this is performant or not? 
Okay, so I'm using Drizzle, so whatever ORN that you might be using, typically there is a way to turn on a logger to print out the raw SQL. Because all ORMs under the hood, they're going to generate SQL statements, and you need to check to make sure that SQL statement is. So in my Drizzle object, you'll see that I have logger true. Every ORM query that you build is going to print out the raw SQL. So I'm going to copy this. So now that we have the query, let's move over to a SQL browser. So I'm using Tables Plus, but you can use like dBeaver or whatever you want to use. And we're going to try to paste in that whole query right here. So whatever tool you're using, there's more than likely a way to run some raw SQL. I'm going to cut this out. I do believe there's like a money sign here. I don't know why I have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and just restructure this. So we're going to run it and notice that we get back the same results. We get back one idea with all the tags that have been kind of coalesced into this coalesce uh, field. So what we want to do is I'm going to show you a keyword you can put on SQL. It's called explain. So just put explain in front of your statement and then you can run it. And notice you get this really convoluted output of how the SQL database basically breaks down your query and gives you the cost analysis of all the different inner joins and sub joins and left joins that you're using. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I know what this is actually doing. Um, this is actually kind of overwhelming. I have no idea what this is doing. But one thing I found to do is you can take this whole thing and you can take it over to AI, right? And you can say, hey, AI, please explain how I can improve this query. And I'm going to paste this in. Okay, It's going to identify that I probably did some type of explain statement. And then it's going to help me identify what keys or what indexes I should probably add in, right? So it's going to tell you like how you can improve this. Um, basically, there's a sub plan in here, which is getting the upvotes. It's being executed for every single row. So this is kind of non-performant, right? Line 25, not that performant. Um, redundant upvote counting. You're calculating upvote count twice, one in select and one in order by. So like um, down here, we're doing the exact same subquery, which probably isn't the most performant. Uh, let's see, multiple SQL scan operations indicate missing indexes. So this one is saying that, hey, we're doing a bunch of like joins and where clauses, but we don't have indexes on the table. And then we have a complex grouping uh, where we're grouping by ID ID, user ID and upvote ID when you likely only need ID ID. The first thing we should probably do if you're using Postgres is you need to make sure that whatever you're doing where clauses on or joins on, you have some type of index in place. That's probably the most important takeaway from this video is when you start creating your Postgres tables or whatever, you need to define indexes on everything. So over here, they give you a list of some of the tables that they suggest you add indexes. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a new terminal over here. I'm going to paste this in. And I'm going to say, use context seven, please add the indexes in line when I declare these tables for me. Okay, so that's going to go and look up the Drizzle ORM docs to try to get the latest up to date information about how it can add indexes. You can add them right here, like simply I just have to say index and then like apply it to a table. Um, but we're going to let AI do it just to kind of walk you through how you can start doing AI first development. Okay, and so it applied those changes to our code base. Let's just go ahead and read through these. So on the idea table, we added an index over the user ID. Okay, we want to be able to quickly look up an idea by a user ID, and this is probably for the upvotes. Um, over here, the upvote, we have an index on the idea ID. And then also the user ID. Again, this is because we have to do a bunch of joins on the idea ID. So when we join an idea to an upvote, we have to use some type of foreign key. So you should probably always have like indexes at least on your foreign keys. Um, down here, let's see what else we have. Again, we have an index on the tag ID and the idea ID. So those are both foreign keys in a sense because this one is referencing the tags which are defined here. So pretty straightforward, just add indexes on your foreign keys and make sure your stuff is set up properly. And then we are going to just go ahead and rerun. Uh, I'm going to say db generate to make the migration scripts and I'll say migrate to apply them. And then we're going to rerun the service real quick. We get back our data, we get the query. And I want to go back to tables plus and we're going to go ahead and just say explain. And 
grab this, I'll put this here. Now, before I run this, I do want to point out that it tells you a cost. Over here, you'll see there's a cost of about 10,000. That's very high. Like this is a very, very slow, unperformant query. And although I only have like one idea in this table, if you have like thousands or tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, this is doing full table scans and causing a lot of performance issues. So you should kind of look at the costs and make sure that they're all pretty low. But 10,000 is very, very high. So I'm going to run this again. And now the whole cost is 29. Okay, so we've basically really reduced this whole query to be a lot more performant. It went from 10,000 all the way down to 29 simply by just adding some indexes. So, so this is a pretty good win, right? We didn't really have to do much other than add some indexes. Um, so now we're going to go back to the other terminal over here and just kind of tell it like, hey, we've improved this a little bit. Um, I added indexes. Do you think I need to improve this anymore? And I'll just paste this in and then I'll click submit. All right, let's read through this. Great news, the indexes definitely helped. Your query cost dropped from 10,000 to 30, which is a massive improvement. However, there are still a few optimizations that would provide a significant benefits. The sub plan is still there. The expensive upvote count subquery still executes every row. Sequential scans on upvote. There's still a sequence scan on upvote with a user ID filtered. The core structural issue remains. Correlated subqueries don't scale well. Now, if you look through this change, it's basically running a bunch of raw SQL now instead of even using Drizzle. Um, is there a way it could rewrite it to use Drizzle? Probably. But let's just go ahead and make sure this loads. And we're going to try this out one more time. I'm going to grab this whole query. We're going to go back and just see how this one performs. So let's find that money sign, which is here. Paste in the user ID, I guess. In fact, I don't know why it's even doing user ID stuff. Like, it really shouldn't need to do user ID stuff. Um, but if you run it, let's see what we get. Okay, it looks like we got the same results, but I'm going to put an explain here. So this query has a cost of 24, so it is more performant, and it looks like it's kind of doing less in this query plan. Now, the other one was 29. So again, I'm not a SQL expert, and I think if I added a lot more data into this table, it would probably give us a better estimate of like how long this stuff would take. Is it worth refactoring my SQL statement for that small improvement in cost? I don't really know. Um, one thing I will say is I don't like how basically now it's not doing any type of drizzle stuff. It's just doing a bunch of SQL. So I might just reject this uh, and be OK with this approach. Again, this isn't really for like a large scale application. There's not a bunch of data. It's really just for this application for people to be able to post uh, video suggestions and upvote on them. So I think this is cool. But um, yeah, we talked about a lot of cool stuff again. Hopefully this is useful to watch. Hopefully you learned something new. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to dive more into. And maybe we can kind of all learn together. All right. Have a good day and happy coding.